guys. So it is five in the morning. I just passed out for a few hours and um, figured let's continue with the demon theme of the month with the Conjuring series. Not really a series. I mean, there's three of them. But James Wan, man. I mean, say what you want about these movies. I don't think they're great movies. They're entertaining, but he has had one hell of a career. Like, from just starting the Saw franchise, which is one of my favorite horror franchises, and I, it will be coming soon. I will be covering that entire series soon. I'm not going to give anything away. But just with that, and then Dead Silence is such an underrated film of his before Insidious he started and then now the Conjuring Universe and so this guy and Malignant which I didn't care for too much but what a fucking career this guy has had like unbelievable the amount of just franchises that he started and I think he's a good director I don't love everything he's done as I said but I think he's a very good director and he's a good writer and let me start saying something about the Warrens. Because now this is based on true events, as they say. And this is where <laughs> people are going to... Um, we're going to differ on this. They're fucking scam artists, they were. Like, 100%. Like, anyone who claims that they're a psychic or a medium, or that they can talk to the dead, or they're spiritual healers, and anything like that, especially, which is, and it's like 99% of the time, that they have a business, that they're taking money from you and from their customers, they're a fucking scam artist. And this is all my opinion, like I said, so if you don't agree, you can either get the fuck off the video, or, <laughs> or you can... Realize that we all have different opinions, and you can just listen to what I'm saying and say, all right, well, I disagree. That's fine. I think what they do is very, very hurtful to people, that especially people who are grieving. And you can make the argument that even if it's not real, like it helps with the grieving process and stuff. It can but I, it's, you're, they're preying on people not just financially, but emotionally. And I just think that it's really, really a bad thing with the psychics and mediums and all that bullshit people are doing. I've never believed in that shit. There has been zero evidence that any of that is true in this reality, in our world. Zero evidence. Same with ghosts and demons and all that shit. People can cite cases all they want and stuff. It'll just like with this movie, what the case that is based off of. There is fucking zero evidence that any of this happened. And I know the daughter, one of the daughters here and stuff, goes on sh shows all the time and stuff, talking about what happened. I'll call her out right now. I don't care if she sees this. You're a fucking liar. And you're in this just for money. You want you sell your books, you want to go on every fucking show that you want, and expand upon bullshit since this movie happened. So you're profiting off of this fucking movie, and a story that never happened, just because of the money. Let's be fucking honest, like seriously. I've seen you on... S the smallest YouTube channels and you'll go on anything just to spread this bullshit. So, calling you out right now, forget your, I even forget your name. So, you're not worth remembering. Sorry, but <laughs> don't believe a fucking word you say. When the Warrens, when it comes to them, same thing. Absolute bullshit artists. They bullshit about the whole thing with Amityville. Every case that they handled. I've seen interviews with uh, Lorraine, sweet lady and stuff, still fucking scam artist. So let's get into The Conjuring 2013, directed by James Wan. I do like this movie. I like the, the second one better, actually. And the third one is not good. That I remember, so the rewatch will be interesting. But this is an effective movie. Now, it's... There's a lot of cliches in this movie. There's a lot of stuff that we've seen already. 
done so much better. Like, I mean, I just covered the Exorcist series, so it's hard to go from the original Exorcist and Exorcist 3 to The Conjuring. I mean, <laughs> you can't compare them completely, but just for the whole demonic possession topic, it's kind of hard to go from, and, and I, I was saying in my Exorcist video that the, the makeup on Reagan and, as a demon, the best that there has ever been and ever will be, probably. Just so effective, it looks too real. And then we go to like something like this. But let's talk about it. Now, I do also want to say and mention that despite everything I just said, <laughs> I think that Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga do amazing jobs in this movie and every film that they're in, in all three of the Conjuring films. They are... The chemistry between them, the dynamic between them is amazing. They work together so well. I love both of them in pretty much everything that they've been in. So that's a huge plus for this movie and this franchise. Right there. It's just having Vera Famiga and Patrick Wilson. Which he was in Patrick Wilson's in the Insidious series too. So just having it's then it gets a little hard fucking distinguishing the two of them because it's just I love Patrick Wilson. I loved him all the way since I saw him in Hard Candy with Ellen Page or whatever she's going by now. And what a fucking actor. But I always kind of see him as Patrick Wilson. Like he kind of just has. He doesn't have that big a range as an actor. Vera Farmiga is fucking phenomenal. And this is not a knock on Wilson at all. Like I said, great actor. I just always see him as the same role. I always see him as Patrick Wilson. Which, it's like seeing somebody that you love always being that same person. So, I'm fine with it. But, he just doesn't have that big of a range. Like, to play different roles. Hard Candy might be the exception, because that was a different role for him. He, that was an older movie, though, so... Everything in the Conjuring series, and the Insidious series, and everything else that he's in, like, in the last decade plus, two decades, it's always the same performance. A good performance, like I keep saying, but it's, it's just the same thing. So, I love both of them, though. Now, we can agree that the Annabelle doll is fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, in the, in the opening of this movie. And then they... That sparked its own fucking franchise, which... I don't know if I'll do it this month. Maybe. I mean, it's so hard getting through that. The first Annabelle is terrible. Like, I really don't like that movie. There's some good things. Like, they're always... Like, I always try to bring out of movies. So, there's some good things in it. But it's not a good movie. Annabelle Creation, I actually very much enjoy. And Annabelle Comes Home is what the fuck ever. It's like pretty much a, like a trailer for every other type of movie that they could possibly make with a different demon or monster or stuff like that. It feels like just a trailer for future fucking uh, Conjuring Universe films. But we'll get into that with that, if I even do the Annabelle series this month. But she, they made the doll really fucking effectively, but a little too much. Like, if we know, though, if you know the case, of, the case of Annabelle, she was a Raggedy Ann doll. I mean, so, like, this is, like, way over the top of, <laughs> from the actual case and the actual Annabelle doll. So, it's effective, but, like, if you're looking at this as a true story, then, I mean, it's a little bit over the top. So we have the opening here of the nurses that had the Annabelle doll, and then it starts moving on its own, and there's cr stuff written in crayon all over the place, and they don't know what the hell's going on. They think it has something to do with the doll, and they end up in letting the doll, like, letting the demon, like, get into, the, into their souls or some shit. I don't remember. I gotta watch it. One second. <laughs> Yeah, so that's right. I haven't seen these movies, movies in a while. So, Annabelle Higgins is the spirit, or demon, whatever the fuck you want to call it, that these nurses had contact with her, I guess, and 
just flat out just said, yes, f come into this doll. <laughs> and that they're nurses and they want to help people. I'm pretty sure the whole wanting to take care of people as a nurse thing doesn't apply to demons. So, like, it's it's a, it's a little stupid with this whole opening thing here. But this is 1968 that this is taking place in. And then we find out later that this is being shown to a whole class on, like, demon possession in a college. Now, did they watch what we're watching? Because I don't think so. But then when they cut to that in the classroom, it looks like they just watched what we did. So did they get these people to, like, reenact this whole little scene here and the explanation on that Annabelle? Because that makes no sense to me. Did they see a totally different thing, like an, the actual footage, and they just film this the way that they did for us, the audience, because that's what it feels like. Like, it feels like this was just for the audience, and then they cut to the classroom and never explain what they were actually watching, because I don't think they were actually watching what we see here, like, at all. Now, I say this all the time. I'm the type of person that if you move anything in my room, or anything any anywhere... <laughs> remotes like this on my table if it's like this someone touched my shit like immediately so the fact that if I saw had a doll and I left the apartment and came back and that doll was in a different position of course I'm very I'm a big skeptic so I would immediately think somebody's fucking with me I wouldn't jump right to this doll is possessed by a demon or a conduit, as they call it in this. So, I would think someone's fucking with me. But after a while, like, if I put deadbolts on my fucking door and shit, <laughs> and, like, boarded up all the windows, and then came back, and this doll's in a different position, immediately I would start thinking there's something suspicious. Like, that this doll might be possessed. Like, 100%, because I know where I leave shit. Now, I'm, I keep leaving this doll somewhere, and it's showing up in different places. There's only so many things that you can cross off the list before you get to, yeah, something uh, supernatural is going on here. The brunette nurse, though, is fucking sexy. And, like, and those those PJs, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's tempting. Kind of a big nose, though. I just thought that was <laughs> something to mention. But that's something that would never stop me, so <laughs> it really doesn't matter. And this guy, their roommate or friend or whatever, was he just, like, cast to, like, be a statue? Because he has, like, no lines here. <laughs> he says nothing. Maybe he says, like, one thing, but, like, just seems like a total waste of, like, having somebody there. He has adds nothing to this scene except for like, turning and looking and, like, acting scared. You might as well have just kicked his ass out of the room and just had the two nurses there. Like, he really had no reason to be in this movie, like, at all. Now, I have never seen, in like, in real life when I was in college or in, in movies, so many people raise their hands with questions in a classroom. Like, ever. Like, every single fucking person raises their hand and has a question. And uh, then Ed fucking, like, picks one of them. He has no idea who the hell he's pointing at. Like, every single person is raising their hand. There's not a chance <laughs> that the person knew that that was who Ed was calling on. So, that's fucking weird. Then we get the opening text there explaining Ed and Lorraine's history. and the, She's a clairvoyant and she can see visions and Ed's the only non-ordained demonologist recognized by the Catholic Church, which I'm not even getting into all that because it's fucking stupid. And <laughs> they've done thousands of cases, which means, yeah, they made a ton of money <laughs> for absolute bullshit. And again... If you don't agree with me on the whole psychic stuff being real, either just accept it, as this, this is just my opinion, or like I said, you can just get the hell off the video and not watch. But we have this fa the family here that moves into the new house, which is such a cliche by, that, 
by now. It's so... It's in every fucking Possession movie. Is that family moves to a new house, and then shit starts happening. But they have a lot of fucking kids. Like, it, it's got to be hard dealing with all these kids in the middle of the country like this. Like, they're out. I forget where this takes place, but I know that they moved from Jersey. So that's a big move. Like, moving from Jersey to out in just the middle of nowhere in the country. It's a pretty decent change in um, lifestyle. So, I don't know. That was something to mention, too. See, this is what I was saying. Like, with this, they're fun movies. And I think this is a good film. I think the next one is better. But it's just so filled with just shit we've seen a million times. The, the, like I said, people move, a family moves into a new house. Dog recognizes that there's something wrong immediately. And like, <laughs> the, the, a music box. The, the, like, there's so many things in, in these films that we've seen so many times done so much better. And there's a tr nice little tracking shot in here that's just, like, wasted because it's, it's, it's just them walking through the house. It's a cool sh tracking shot. It's, it's shot very well. I just feel like it's wasted on, on this when they could have used it for a scene that would be much more effective than just following the kids through the house. The music box, though, even though, like I said, it's like we've seen all this before, the music that it plays is kind of creepy, and by now it's like pretty iconic for people who are big fans of the series and James Wan and everything like that. You, I hear that that music, I know immediately from The Conjuring. So they did a good job with that, with making uh, the music pretty creepy from that box. Now, the clapping game that they play is a very good idea. It sets up nice um, little foreshadowing for a great scene we get later. And there's a lot of tension there. Like, it's a very good idea that James Wan threw in here of this whole little game. And adds a nice little touch for when they get to, when we get to that scene and we see the hands coming out of the closet of whatever the demon and Ed and Lorraine Warren say that the doll's not possessed it's a conduit for a demon so the demon is using the Annabelle doll and this has nothing to do with this rest of the movie because we don't see Annabelle ever again it's just the opening but it's just a conduit so the music box also would just be a conduit for the demon, what the hell's her name, Bathsheba, some shit like that. She's like a witch who was on this land like hundreds of years ago. So it would just be a conduit also. Now, in this movie, it's handled fine. In the Annabelle series, it's a whole other thing because that shit is the dolls moving all over the place on her own. And then we see the demon and stuff that's like controlling her. And then it's like, why even need the doll like just it's a demon just it's, and we see it doing shit the whole movie so why even have the doll like why need the doll in any way if you're a demon and you can do shit on your own i don't know it makes no sense in those in that series but in this it makes more sense because we don't see the stupidity that we see in the annabelle series like it, we can actually i can believe for this movie that the music box is a conduit for this demon that is going to start, you know, haunting this family and taking over the mother. And everyone gives pretty good to great performances in this movie. All the all the kids, they do a good job. All the mother and the father, great job. I forget the mom, the mom, the actress's name who plays the mom. I've seen her in a lot of things. Forget her name, but she's always been pretty good with her performances and anything that I've seen her in. So we have that. That's good. That we at least have very good performances here, and it feels like the '70s. Like they, he pretty much captured the feel of being in the 1970s. So, the setting, the time period, the acting, all of that is very, very good in this movie, and it's it's pretty damn effective when we finally get to 
the end and we find the mom possessed and they have to do the whole exorcism and everything. So it's pretty well done in a lot of ways, this movie. But it does have, like I said, some a decent amount of stupidity and more so as we like go on with this. I should also mention jump scares, which <laughs> I mention a lot on this channel that I cannot stand the jump scares that we get for the last like 20 so years of just the loud noises with the damn music or like a violin or a, it sounds like a fucking cat screeching it's so overdone it's so annoying i hate jump scares and unfortunately this whole series basically just goes nuts with them so that's a big thing for me that brings these movies down there are too many jump scares there's not enough tension being built. This movie does have some scenes, like I said, like the clapping scene, and other ones that are very tense. But there are a lot of movies in this franchise, like the universe of The Conjuring, that are just jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. And after a while, it's just like, all right, all righty, like, just, just do something different. Like, we, we get it. Like, you can pop shit out and scare people for a second. And I've said it before, jump scares like this, they're not deserved. Like, the, 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 the scare is not deserved. There's no tension being built. If I took something and just chucked it at your face, you're going to react. It's just a reaction. It's the same thing with a jump scare. So you throw something at someone's face, they're going to fucking freak out for a second. They're going to react. It's a natural reaction. There's, n there's no fucking tension being built there. It's an undeserved scare. And, like I said, they use it so much in this, they use it so much in the Insidious franchise, and all of James Wan stuff has this, except for, like, the Saw series, because that's a totally different genre and stuff. But that's maybe one of the biggest negatives that I can pick out of James Wan's career and all the movies that he's done, is that it just, it's a, he relies so much on jump scares, and after you've seen one or two of these, it's, you know exactly what to expect for, like, the next one. Like, that's why the third Conjuring, by that point, it's like, all right, we've seen all of this. Like, it's getting old. And then the whole... Everything in the universe of the Conjuring, which I'll get to, like I said, either this... I don't know if I'll do Annabelle this month. Maybe, because they are demonic possession movies. But I don't know if I can watch... <laughs> all three Conjurings, and then all three Annabelles, like, that close together. Because it would probably just kill me with all the jump scares, because I just can't handle that shit. It's stupid. And, like, do de demons have rules or some shit that they have to just, like, stop clocks and, like, knock on the fucking walls and all the, and move shit around for no reason and stuff, like, before they can finally... Like, actually do what they're trying to do and take over someone and possess them. Because we see this in, like, every fucking ghost haunting movie or demon movie. I know it's a movie and you gotta, like, set it up before it gets to that possession part. But it's, I mean, Poltergeist is such a great movie. But, pff, damn, Poltergeist, like, <laughs> you really started something that just is in every movie with just moving shit around. It's like, do they have to do this? Like, do they have to play jazz records and shit like that, like we see in so many of these movies? Like, it's like the demons have to, like, play and fuck around for, like, an hour of every movie before they finally can say, all right, we're done with the little child's play, messing around with stuff, moving shit around, throwing pictures around. Let's finally get to business and possess these people. I'm waiting for a movie that... And, actually, there is kind of, like, and they're much better movies that I feel like now it's like, damn, I should have just threw demons on. But Lumberto Bava's Demons and Demons 2, and um, Michael uh, Suave's the, the Church. Fucking amazing movies that don't have any of these cliches in them that are very original, that is just demons all over the place going fucking crazy. And that's awesome. <laughs> like, they're such good movies, I'd definitely be doing them this month. And if they avoid 
all of this bullshit that we see in all of these demonic possession movies that are, like I said, gotta wait for them to finish fucking around with stupid little things before they finally say, all right, time to, time to possess the person that we've been trying to possess. I don't know. But Demons, Demons 2 in the church, so fucking good, those three movies. I might do them, like, like tomorrow, meaning, like, it is today, but tomorrow. Fuck you guys, you know what I mean. I really kind of feel like partly this movie was like a trailer for Annabelle. <laughs> like, just this, they have so much focus on Annabelle here that it just feels like, all right, hey, look at this scary doll a lot because we got a whole movie and series of her coming out for you soon. Like, that's how it feels. And then we have this reporter that's going through their demonic conduit room and shit where they have all different things from different cases that have supposedly are all haunted or were or are conduits, as they say in the movie, that these things are not possessed, that they're just conduits that demons use to manipulate things. So when they're going around in this room, the news reporter he says, why not just burn them? Like, incinerate them. And he says that would only destroy the vest the conduit and stuff. But isn't that, like, a good thing? Like, wouldn't you want to burn these conduits so that the demons can't use them? Like, I don't see the logic there at all. Like, keeping them around? For what? Like, is there still demons attached to them? And they're all in that room? We see that in Annabelle Comes Home. That, like, basically all those things are still conduits for all the different demons. So they just got, like, a fucking demon room with thousands of, <laughs> of objects that are all supposedly, you know, used by demons to manipulate stuff in the real world and then finally possess people. It doesn't seem like the best idea, when you, especially when you have a young fucking daughter that he comes into the room and then... Ed, Ed Warren has to tell her that, like, you know, you're not supposed to be in here. Like, a kid has ever listened to that fucking advice or, or command or anything like that. As soon as you say you're not allowed in this room, that, that girl's going in that room. So, like, I know they got locks on the door. If this was real, like, if I believed in this shit, and I had a room with all of those things in it, it would be, in, I would not be in the house, like, first of all. I would not be in my fucking house. It would be in another location somewhere, like a fucking storage unit, <laughs> something like that, that my daughter can't just walk in there and start messing with all these things. And I can't believe it's 27 minutes in <laughs> on this video, and I'm, like, fucking a half hour into this movie. Oh, don't do that. Half hour into this movie. So I don't know why this is going to be so long, but... It is, so you should you guys should be used to that. And demons love static on TVs. Whenever they turn the TV on, it's always the static channel. Once I'd love for a demon movie, like to, to turn the TV on and it's just like hardcore pornography. Like <laughs> something. Something that's totally different than what we see in all these movies that is just fucking static. I've I haven't turned on a TV in so static in I don't know, since the nineties. So, we see this all the time. I mean, it is the 70s, so maybe I wasn't alive then, so I don't know if there was just... It, there wasn't, all right? It, it's just stupid, is what I'm trying to say. Every single movie like this turns on a TV and there's static on it. It turns on the radio and it's a creepy... It's a song, an old jazz tune or some shit that is happy and cheery at first, and then later on in the movie it starts... It's creepy. Because it's being played by whoever the fuck is there. A ghost or a demon, whatever. It's another trope that's used so much, it's, it has to be done with. Like, it has to be retired. And I do have to say that this movie and all of the movies in the series, they are very well made. They're very well shot. The sound design is great. Like, the way that... Things are framed and it's very good. Like, the, these are very well made films. They're good to look at, like, they're good looking movies. So they have that going for them. Like, they're very well made. Even if there are a lot of things in it that just don't hit for me, 
I see why so many people love these movies. Like I said, I don't, I like these movies. I don't love them by any fucking mean. Like, they're not great, great films. But they are entertaining. Like, I'll absolutely give it that. But the whole true story shit that is tacked on to all of them, it just does nothing for me, as you can tell by now. <laughs> absolutely nothing for me. But they do a great job with a lot of aspects of filmmaking in this movie. And it's James Wan, so I wouldn't expect less by him. Is it Andrea? That's that's the uh, one of the sisters here, the one that's always going on talk shows and stuff now. I'm pretty sure it's, that's that's the one, Andrea. So if you ever see this, like seriously, I will bring you on the channel. I will tear you apart with questions, and and you won't be able to answer them because this shit never happened. So that's an open invitation. If you, if Andrea, what is it, Peyton or some shit like that, or or something like that. If you ever see this, you are absolutely welcome to come on this channel and explain this whole story, this true story that happened to you and your family. And I have a lot of questions for you. And you're not going to be able to answer them because this shit's all fucking fake. The little girl who makes her mom look into the music box and scares the shit out of her. He's a fucking asshole, this little kid. So we have the clap scene, like I was saying. is very well sh well done. It, the, there's a lot of tension in this scene. The whole point of her being... The whole fact that she's uh, blindfolded. And she's walking around. And she's trying to listen to her daughter's claps. And she has three claps to give. And on the third one, we see the one come... The hands come out of the wardrobe to Narnia. And <laughs> I don't know the whole thing with this all more. Like, the... Conduit is supposed to be the music box, right? So, like, but it's, like, very heavily implied that, like, that armoire is, like, the heart of the, like, the demonic, whatever the hell you want to call it. Where, where the, like, the heart of the house is for the evil here. Like, we hear in Poltergeist and stuff that there's a heart in the house and, like, the most haunted part is the armoire here, because we see a few scenes of, I don't even know what to call it, because we see that girl who, like, jumps off the armoire, that's a cool scene, too. Who is it? Like, I don't know. Is that the demon? Like, in a, in a different form? I don't know how any of that works. It's just there to be scary. So, I don't care for it much, but there, it is an effective scene. But the whole clap scene, like I said, is very well made. Very well done, very well shot. The sound design is great. The score is great. Throughout this whole movie, the score is very good. And, yeah, it's a good scene. Just saying, so you know, Discover, they're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> now, we get another good scene here. With Christine waking up in the middle of the night and looking under her bed and stuff, which is effective because who hasn't had that happen? Who hasn't done that as a kid, thinking that there's something under your bed? I know I have. Like done the exact same thing. Just you, you fucking just looking. You get out. You partially get out of bed and you look under your bed just to see. And it's scary as shit when you're a kid because you still you're still not fully developed, I guess, mentally to know that this is all bullshit. And that there's no such thing as monsters and ghosts and all that stuff. So it's a very effective scene because it reminds me of being a kid and, like, actually being afraid of that shit and looking under your bed or in the closet or, like, anything like that. And then we have the whole thing that there's somebody standing behind the door and she's pointing and saying, like, to her sister, like, there's somebody there and she doesn't see anything. What would have been better is if we actually saw something, like, that would be better and scarier, but there's nothing there. <laughs> and then we get a fucking jump scare with the fucking door shutting, and it's a good scene. They could have handled... I don't know why I keep doing that. We, They could have handled it better. Like I said, they could have at least had something there. Like, had something standing in the shadow. Things like hereditary. Like, when... Um, the sun comes down the stairs and you just see and they bring no attention to it. You see in the fucking dark room, you just see one of the naked cult members. 
and again, no attention drawn to it. Your eyes have to find it perfect. They could have done something like that here, but they didn't. And so it kind of takes away from the scene for me. And then she ends up saying that they, and she heard somebody say that they want the family dead. That's when you take your daughter to see a doctor or, or you believe her and you get the fuck out of this house. And of course, no one ever does. Now we see the Warrens with some other couple saying that they think their house is possessed or haunted and that it could be noises in the pipes and stuff. And Lorraine says that most of the time there's a rational explanation. Yet these people have done a thousands of cases where there it all ended up being fucking actual hauntings or demonic possessions and all of this. Yet most of the time it's a rational explanation, she says. So she don't even follow her own advice. I mean, they found thousands of cases of real, actual paranormal stuff. Yet most of the time it's it's just bullshit. It's just noises in the house, the house settling, pipe noise. Like really, like it. This is where it makes no sense, and you see the bullshit completely from the Warrens. And I'll also make a note that in that scene in the room with the girls, with Christine and her sister. And they finally scream when the door shuts. The parents are up like motherfuckers and they are running right to that room. They hear them screaming. The whole house does. Just a point to make for something later. And now it's later. The mom is awake. And all the picture, pictures and frames on the, stair, on the staircase all crash to the fucking ground and make such a loud noise... But yet, nobody wakes up. Nobody hears this. <laughs> it's just her that hears this noise of at least seven, eight picture frames falling down and crashing to the ground and breaking. But yet, everybody woke up just a little bit ago, like just from the girl screaming. So no one heard this. That's absolute bullshit. And then she's hearing the claps, and she's screaming, who is that? And, so, and again, no one hears this, no one wakes up. Like, does she give her whole family Ambien at night to make them, like, really pass the hell out and sleep that they can't hear shit? But then again, like I said, they were all right there after the door shut and Christine was screaming. And then we had the whole basement scene that they find out that there's an actual cellar in the house that they didn't know about. And there's boards that they took out, and he's, the father said he's going to look into it. And we get a cool little scene here when the mom is looking down into the basement. Uh, then she gets trapped down there, and it's, it's another tense scene. It's well done. But, again, just the whole fact that no one heard this just takes me out of it. Like, it really does. Like, when I pay attention to, like, stuff like that, it really takes me out of the movie. The fact that no one heard any of this noise, the mom falling down the stairs, none of this. And then finally, I mean, the dad comes and rescues her from the basement. But then, again, like I was saying earlier, with the armoire and stuff, like being kind of like the heart of all this, the basement is also shown to be like the hot spot. So there's multiple hot spots of the paranormal shit going on, I guess. Like, I don't know, Andrea uh, per Perron, that's the name. Andrea, if you see this, let me know. Where was the heart of this house? Was it the basement? Was it the armoire? This is the true story, right? You live this, so answer these questions for me. I would love to hear them from you. And then we have another jump scare, but it's, it's not egregiously bad. It's pretty well done. When the mom is in the basement, she's trapped down there, and then she lights the match. And then you hear the ghost of uh, Rory or whatever say, hey, you want to you wanna play the, the game of clap? Uh, then you get the hands clap behind her, and the lights go out. It's, it's a good jump scare. Like, it's effective. It's creepy. Like, it's a good, they do a good, good job with that. But again, like, this is the point where you get the hell out of the house, right? Like, this woman just was in the basement with knowing that it's not her kids not her husband, and saw these hands clap behind her. And, and this isn't suspicious at all. This isn't scary in one, one bit. This isn't something that you say to your husband and say, we got to leave this house. I just saw some shit. 
No. Like this is this happens in so many movies. It's like do the do demons have like think cabin in the woods when they're able to pump like uh chemicals into the air that makes them want to stay together and not split up somehow because that's one hell of a specific fucking chemical. But do demons have the same thing? Like a retardation chemical that they pump out so that people don't make rational decisions and they just say, ah, that, I'll just shake that off and stay in this house. I'm guessing they do because nobody would stay in this house after this woman experienced what she did already. The scene with the armoire when the, the daughter's sleepwalking again and she's banging her head against it and then the doors are open and then they look up and they see that just demonic girl or woman up there and she jumps off of it. That's a great scene. Very well done. I saw a movie, what the hell was it called? Was it just called Dahl? It's like a, a foreign film that basically rips off a a Annabelle, like 100%, and they use the exact same scene, like the exact same shot. Like there's same way, it's filmed the same way in everything. Like as soon, the, it's like they're looking here and then they pan up and there's some demon thing up there and it jumps off of like a closet or an armor or something like that. Same exact thing. It's called Doll. And then there's like a Doll 2 and I think there's a third one. They're actually not too bad <laughs> like for ripping off this movie and the Annabelle series and all that. They're not too bad. I forget who directed it but I'll remember or I'll put it in the description or something, but they're not, like, really worth going to check out, but just in case people are big fans of The Conjuring and want to see, like, more of that same stuff, even though it's, like, completely ripped off, Dahl, Dahl 2, and then there's a third one by him, so you can check those out. Now, we see the Warrens again in this classroom, showing footage of what we find out later in The Nun is Frenchie. And that he was possessed and everything and showing the exorcism on him. And Ed Warren says that he had a third, third grade edu education, but he spoke some of the best Latin that he's ever heard, sometimes backwards. Now, Latin is a, is a dead language. Like, no, nobody knows what good Latin or bad Latin is. Like, <laughs> whether it's backwards or not. So, that's, none of that makes sense. And then they ask one of the one of the classmates, the one of the students asks, "Did you personally perform the exorcism?" And he says, "No, he's not authorized to do that." But yet we see him do an exorcism at the end of this movie. So there's so many things that just make no sense. And again, <laughs> I don't want to keep repeating shit, but it's hard not to like watching this movie. Um, the mom ends up going to this uh, this class. And watches Ed and Lorraine and stuff, showing the whole thing with Frenchie. And then she approaches uh, Ed and Lorraine and says, there's something going on in the house, and can you come check it out? And again, he says, Ed tells her that it's usually a rational explanation. Yet these fuckers have found thousands of actual cases. Come on, man. Like, if you think of the odds of that, that they found actual cases, thousands of them... But most of the time, it's a rational explanation. And what are these people? They had to have seen, what, a few hundred, a hundred thousand of cases in order for a few thousand of them to be legit? They went around seeing hundreds of thousands of people. Like, again, it's so fucking stupid. And damn, man, they got all girls. Like, they didn't have one boy. And that's pretty remarkable. They got, like, five daughters. I don't know, just something to mention. And now I know a lot of this video, and, well, the part one and part two is harping on uh, the Warrens. And people are going to say, don't speak ill of the dead and all that. They're fucking dead, so they don't hear me. So it really doesn't matter. So I'll say whatever the hell I want about them. I'm not speaking ill of them. I'm just saying that they were full of shit. But damn it, uh, Vera Famiga and Patrick Wilson just kill it in this movie. They really do. Like, I, I, the best performances, obviously. I mean, nothing against the other actors and actresses. Like I said, everyone does a good job in this. But 
Oh, especially Vera Famigas. She just kills it in this and everything that she's in. I love her so much. Now, Ed starts recording their conversation with the parents. And right before that, he says, with everything that's been going on in the house, why don't you guys just move? So he says this. And then just a little bit later, he says, moving wouldn't help. Like It's like uh, stepping on gum. It follows you. And I mean, he's right. It is hard as shit to get rid of gum. <laughs> but he just said, why don't you move? And then says that it doesn't matter if you moved. So, again, just like contradictions all over the place with the rules and everything. Now, the scene with Lorraine and the little girl with the music box, when she's looking into the music box and the reflection... First of all, the three times stuff that we see in so many movies, I wish they would change that up. Like, whether it's a movie that they're trying to break a door down, it's always on the third try that it opens. In movies like this, it goes three times, it goes two times, she doesn't see anything, and then the third time she sees the ghost of Rory behind her, like, in the reflection. It's so predictable. Like, it really is. Like, it's a good scene. But it's like one, two, uh, yep, and then three, we're going to see something. It's like, it's so obvious. It's, it's, it's always the third time. But when she sees Rory in the reflection, and then she looks back at the door, it's not reversed. Like, she's looking into a mirror. But yet she sees Rory's ghost in the reflection, and then when she looks back, it's exactly the way that she saw it in the music box mirror so it wasn't reflected like it should be so that's something i guess i didn't pay attention to at the scene when the warrens go outside and lorraine is right by the tree and then uh, ed asks her what's wrong and she we see the person hanging like the ghost of, of Bathsheba, hanging there and we see the legs and stuff like that that lorraine sees that's cool like, it's well shot, it's effective, it's pretty fucking creepy. They do a good job with that. So yeah, we get that scene with the Warrens explaining what's going on here. And Lorraine said that she's seen this dark entity right when she walked through the house. Like, walked into the house for the first time. And saw it behind the mother. And then saw it again behind the kids. We didn't see any of that shit. I mean, it's, this is flashbacks. So, I mean... That would have been very pertinent information, right? That, like, she would have said, like, right away. Because that's what I would do if I was her. Like, as soon as I walk in and I see a fucking demonic entity attached to the mother, I would pull them all aside and be like, all right, yeah, I just saw. <laughs> I just saw a demon behind you. So, yeah, everything you're saying, this is actually happening. But no, she waits until she sees this... The ghost bitch hanging from a tree then tells the family and then this is when he says that like it's like stepping on gum you take it with you yet he advised them earlier said why don't you just move so I don't know and then they're they're, they're gonna have uh, somebody like take a look at the property and like the history of it and everything that's how they find out about Bathsheba and that she was hung there and that she, she hates that the fact that people take her land when they move on to her on to this land and so she possesses them because of that like they mentioned that uh, like a maid was was killed but like i guess the homeowners are fine like <laughs> they're the ones who like took the land like, or, like took the land whatever the hell you want to call it they're the ones who moved in but the, the maid was the one that deserved to die? Like, see what I mean? There's just so many things that it's like, that make no sense. Like, that there's no attention paid to, like, paid to it. There's no, that, I don't, it's 6.30 in the morning. Fuck you guys. I can't think. But yeah, like, it makes, there's so many things that don't make sense. And yeah, it's a movie about demonic possession. But like I said, we've seen this done so much better in so many other movies. And just, not to keep bringing The Exorcist up, but, excuse me, we have The Fucking Exorcist. Like, done one of the most perfect movies ever made. And the demonic possession movie. 
and it's handled so well and everything makes sense in it. Here is just shit thrown in just to make it creepy and it, there's no explanation behind it. Like, the whole reason that this Bathsheba demon supposedly is possessing, trying to possess the mom here, is because they moved onto her property. And that's taking her land in some way. But you know, the, the maid, and then they mention some other, like a kid who drowned or some shit. Again, again, he didn't take the fucking land. His parents, the family moved in, and they're fa they were fine. Nothing happened to them. So, none of the whole motive for the demon makes sense in this movie. Actually, Andrea, if you ever see them, maybe you can explain. Maybe you can uh, tell me uh, what Bathsheba's uh, motives were for haunting your family. I would, I'd love to hear that. Discount Joseph Gordon-Levitt. All right, now I know the father said that they're not really church-going people. But he really had to ask what's in that bottle. He didn't know it's holy water. Like, does anybody have to ask that question? Like, if you're dealing with, like, so something like this, and you see a little bottle of water, instantly, it's, to me, it's, that's holy water. So, I don't know. Like, he, the fact that he had to ask that question, what, it's just a reason for Ed to explain that the presence of holy things will get a reaction from things that are unholy, right? Like, that's the whole reason that they even had that line. Right? Right. Yeah, when they rec when they turn the camera on and they start recording themselves going down into the basement and stuff, this is the 70s. That video looks so fucking crisp and clear and stuff. Like, there's no chance that a video like that and from the 70s with that equipment is looking that good. Not a big deal, like, but it's it's something I notice and it's it's kind of annoying. But oh, again, fucking Vera Famiga, she just kills it. Like, she's just so good in everything. I love that woman to death. And again, just the dynamic between Wilson and Farmiga is so good. Like, every scene with them together, absolutely kill it. Like, both of them. They just have such great chemistry, these two actors. And throughout all of these movies, all three of these movies, they do such a good job portraying the scam artist Warrens. The scene right after when they're talking, uh, the, the Warrens, and they're saying that they can get used to this and being in the country and everything, and saying that they have a beautiful family and that they have to help them. And then Ed leaves, and then the sheet flies up to the window, and Lorraine sees a figure in the window. That's cool. That, like, that's a cool shot when we see that ghost or whatever it is in the window. Like, good job with that. And now we start to see Carolyn. That's her name, the mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad with remembering names in movies that I really don't care about much. Again, I think this is a good film, but I don't love it or anything. So, who the fuck remembers her name? Carolyn, though. And she comes out of the bathroom, looks so disheveled and stuff, and says that she's just feeling nauseous, and then, oh, I hear, the, I hear my family, I gotta go. Lorraine, she looks a little suspicious, obviously, but it's like, come on. Like, right then and there, it's like, yeah the possession is starting to happen. So, I don't know. She doesn't, like, she doesn't react in a realistic way. She just kind of just looks at her and just accepts, like, all right, maybe she's feeling nauseous after seeing all the stuff going on in this house. Like, I feel like they could have done the possession a lot earlier. Like, the, uh, not possession, the exorcism. A lot earlier on her because she's obviously getting possessed or is possessed at this point already. So they they could have done better handling like when she gets actually possessed and stuff because she looks like shit when she walks out of that bathroom. Then we get the whole story of um, Frenchie's exorcism when um, Lorraine saw something that scared her so much that she ended up locking herself in the bedroom for eight days and didn't sleep or, or didn't eat for eight days? Yeah, get the hell out of here. There's no way. No one just doesn't eat for eight days and is fine. Like, you cannot go that long without food. All right, the whole scene with the skeptic guy who's there that, like, the Warrens know or works for the Warrens or whatever, who doesn't believe in this stuff, and then he sees the ghost saying, like, look what you made me do and that her wrists are slit, and then, like, attacks him, basically. 
I'm out, like, <laughs> right then and there. Like, that's all I need. If I was him, and I, like I say, I'm a skeptic, I saw that, I'm gone. Like, I don't give a fuck about this family. <laughs> like, I am getting out of this house immediately. Now that I know this shit's real, I, I would be so far gone from this house. It's not even funny. So they they captured on, on audio another voice, the ghost of the kid, Rory, with, that's hanging out with Cindy and saying, this is where I hide and everything. You would think that that would be evidence right then and there that paranormal shit exists. But they never showed that to anybody after this. Like, nothing. Like, they just sat on that that evidence, that, like, evidence of paranormal activity being actually real. That ghosts and demons exist. And they just decided not to show anything. And show that evidence to anybody. I mean, again, like, it's that's something that that's a huge thing, right? Like, <laughs> and they don't show it to anybody. They don't say a fucking word about this. Why? Because this shit never happened. And maybe again, I know I keep calling you out, Andrea. I'd love to ask you that question. How come uh, they didn't do anything with the uh, audio recordings? Let me, I would love to hear an explanation for so much shit. The fact that when Lorraine falls down through the floor all the way to the cellar and she doesn't even break a bone. She doesn't even hurt herself in one bit. Is is so stupid. I mean, like, come on, man. You see how big of a fall that is that she went through just now? Like, she dropped, like, three floors down into the cellar. And she's just, like, dusty. Like, that's it? Like, get the hell out of here, man. That is such bullshit on every level. Again, though, the score in this movie is very good. Like, it's with most of James Wan's movies. He is very good at picking out composers for the score for the movies. Because all of these movies, I can't think of one that has a bad score. And it's very effective in certain scenes. And like with this scene in the cellar, when after she takes that fucking fall that does nothing to her, another tense scene. It's very well shot, it's very well done. Like with her hearing the ghost saying that she made me do it, and then seeing the ghost like right up in her face, the makeup on the ghost, like it looks like shit, but that's me coming from The Exorcist and stuff recently, so... I'm going to mention how it just doesn't look good. Like, it it really doesn't. Like, the effects on all the ghosts in here, like the one on top of the cabinet or the, the armor or whatever, looks all right, but it just it doesn't look great. Like, I, I know you can't compare this to the fucking Exorcist, like, obviously, but that's always going to be the gold standard for me. So anytime I see something like this in a movie like this and look at the makeup effects or just stupid CGI it just does not look good like for me it, but it is an effective scene it's tense as hell i don't like basements <laughs> i really don't they're creepy as shit to me especially ones like this that like these types of cellars that like they're not like it they're not like furnished or anything they're not, like redone like there's just bare bones of a cellar that's, those are creepy fucking places. I wouldn't go down there. And so the whole scene of her down there is very effective. It's very creepy. And they do a good job with that. Again, though, the makeup kind of takes me out of it. When Lorraine hears Judy, her do their daughter, saying mommy and then sees her daughter's body like floating in the, in the water, that's a great scene. That is, that's heartbreaking. Like, I couldn't imagine seeing an image or a, whatever the hell you want to call it, a vision of my daughter dead floating in the water. Dude, you have no idea how that would creep me the hell out. And then they end up calling home, and there is actually something going on there, and they race home, and then I'm not up to that yet. Again, I don't want to keep shitting on the Warrens, but... They go to this priest, 
and show them pictures and stuff, and you see like the ghost of Rory behind, right behind the young girl, and the, he says, "Wow, you weren't kidding! Like this is actually happening." And then Ed proceeds to say that he's never seen anything like this before, and neither is the the priest that they're talking to. But yet they've seen thousands of cases of paranormal shit. But they've never seen anything like this. They've never seen a ghost. That's all it is. It's just a ghost behind a girl. I mean, there's other stuff that they've seen in the house, yeah. But that evidence that they show, like, it's just so weird that the, it's so stupid. Like, it really is. Just knowing that, just not knowing, but just the fact that they say that this is based on true shit. Uh, then having scenes like that, when we know that they've seen this before, <laughs> like they've done thousands of cases, is what they've what what we're told, and is what they said when they were still alive. And, oh, we've seen thousands of cases, and they got the whole room with all those objects and conduits and stuff like that, but yet they've never seen a picture. They've never seen a ghost, like just chilling behind somebody. Lorraine walked in the house and immediately saw something much more scary attached to the mom, to Carolyn, and then attached to the kids. And then she saw something, hang she saw the Bathsheba demon hanging from the tree. But they've never seen anything like this. They've never seen anything like a ghost. Like, oh God, I don't know. Annabelle on the run. Bell on the run. Annabelle's missing. And then the parents, uh, the, you know, the Warrens end up coming home. Now, the Warrens lived in Connecticut. So I forget where the house was that the parents lived in. But I'm pretty sure it's far as fuck away from Connecticut. So they just happen to get home just in time <laughs> before anything crazy happens to Judith here, to their daughter. I will say, the whole scene when they get home, or right before they get home, when Judith's in, locked in the room and there's the woman in the chair with Annabelle rocking in the rocking chair, and the, Annabelle's head twists around and looks at her, uh, then she's banging on the door for her Nana to wake up, and then they finally get home, and right before the chair gets thrown at the wall, Ed grabs Judith out of the way, and then she gives the line, there was someone rocking in the chair with Annabelle, like... That's my favorite scene in the movie. Like, favorite scene in the movie by far. Like, it's it's just so creepy with that woman in the chair with the doll. And just having their daughter being trapped in there has got to be terrifying. Like, to be Judith in that situation. And just the way it's shot and the sound design is really good. The score is great, like, when they use utilize it in the right places. It's a very, very good scene. And it's my favorite in the movie. Like, b b by a long shot. Like, that's my favorite scene. And yeah, Warrens, this is why you don't keep a room full of demonic shit in your fucking house. When you have a daughter, especially, because that's what's going to happen. You're going to have Annabelle on the loose, and you're, you're going to have your whole house haunted. Which we see in Annabelle Comes Home, which is just insane. <laughs> the whole point that they kept a room of fake demonic shit is stupid because none of this is true. But if it was, the fact that they keep a whole room full of this stuff and see, she the daughter went in there like, and she does too again and Annabelle comes home and I forget the timeline so I don't want to be wrong on this and like knock it. But I forget when Annabelle comes home takes place, what year it does. So I don't know if that was before this movie I, no, it's not, right? It's after, because Judith's older in Annabelle Comes Home, so it does come after. So she should know in that movie to not go in that room by any means, because this shit happened to her when she was young, and it scared the hell out of her. So that whole movie is kind of like a whole question mark now, because why in the world would she ever go in that room or let her friends in there or anything after she knows exactly what can happen, especially with, with the doll, because of this whole thing that happened to her when she was younger. So, I don't, I'll talk about that in Annabelle Comes Home, but that's weird that she doesn't remember 
that's kind of a hard thing to fucking forget. So, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. And, like, when we can finally see Carolyn possessed here and stuff. A great shot of her being, you know, pulled down to the basement. And she's holding on and stuff for dear life. And then she gets pulled away. It looks good. But the makeup on her, for, like, being possessed, it looks terrible. Like, it really does. And I'm not even going to mention the movie that I talked about before, just to compare it, but even not comparing it to that, it, it looks bad. Like, it does not look good. And it's just, it doesn't, it's not effective. Like, it doesn't work for me. The whole look of her being possessed in this movie. And the possess, the exorcism itself, which we're about to get to, but, like, uh, they could have done so much better with that. Well, I got that same ad that I accidentally stopped the video uh, before. <laughs> but uh, just so you know, Discover, they're not going to take it anymore. They got Twisted Sister playing in their commercial. So I don't know what the commercial's for because they don't fucking really tell you. <laughs> it's just like a lot of commercials that just random shit happens and you don't even know what they're advertising. But that's what I was trying to say last time at the end of the the previous video before I ended it. I guess... Not worth mentioning because it fucked the video up and now it's in two parts. But you know how I plug commercials, so that there you go. Discover, they're not taking it no more. Pos exor possession's going on. They need an exorcism. We gotta call Father Gordon because he's Ed Warren's not allowed to do uh, exorcisms. Oh, he's too far. He's not gonna make it. Fuck it, I gotta do it then. Come on. This is like really, like, he really didn't need that guy at all. Because this was just going to happen. And he knows how to do exorcisms. So he should just be doing exorcisms. Fuck the church. Like, seriously. Like, he really can't just do this on his own. He does it here. So, and then he doesn't he do it. Well, Formiga does. Um, Lorraine does in the second movie. Gets rid of the demon, too. In the stupidest way, too. Well, I'll get to that in that movie. But... I don't know. The whole thing, the, there was no need then for that whole scene of them going and showing the evidence to the to the father and having it pushed to the Vatican because it just ends up with fucking Ed doing the exorcism himself. So, stupid. And this whole part of the exorcism before, like, we see her, like, facing it, and it's like, let's just throw a sheet on her so we don't have to fucking do effects and, and, like, make her look possessed. That's exactly why there's a sheet on her head, because they wanted to save money on not do and worry about effects on her. So let's just, that's, that's just a good idea. If you ever can't do effects for a possession, just throw a fucking sheet over her head. And then there you go. You don't have to show anything. And it's another trope that we see in all of these movies with just birds that fly into the into the house and just die because they're stupid birds. Like, I don't get it. Like, birds know how to fly very well. And they know not to just fly headfirst into a fucking building. <laughs> like, it happens every now and then, I'm sure. But we see this in every fucking demonic possession movie. Like for decades now and if I see another bird soon I'm like I can't after the whole <laughs> the whole double feature of Birdemic 2 and Birdemic that me and, and some great people stream the other night that's enough birds for me I mean it's good to see like an actual bird and not like the cheapest fucking CGI bird that you've ever seen but I don't want to see any birds for a while but damn man Ed speaks some of the best Latin I've ever heard when uh, Carolyn was possessed there and she's in the chair rocking and stuff and she spits the blood out of her mouth and it comes through the sheet, that's really cool. Like, that looks good. I like that. All right, now this is going to sound terrible because it is. But you guys should be used to me saying a bunch of terrible shit. And no, I'm sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic here. Just making a point. Couldn't they just kill her? <laughs> like the mom like seriously couldn't they just kill her and then the demon would be gone because it can't possess her and then the rest of the family would be fine so like kind of like a sacrifice for her family couldn't they just like cut the, cut her fucking head off and like dismember her body like a deadite or something and then they'd be fine I don't know just a point I know it's terrible I already said that so that shit's off the table 
I already said that it's bad. But it, it is an option, right? Like, I'm pretty sure it is. But the whole thing with her, like, the, the chair levitating and then flipping upside down, that, that looks cool. Like, that looks really good. So there are some good things in this exorcism ending here. There's just a lot of dumb stuff, too. But it's not terrible in any way. Like, it, it, it's fun to watch. And then we finally see Carolyn with some makeup and stuff. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look good. Like, I know I've said that, but it's like, it just doesn't look great. It's, it's fine, but they could have done so much better with making her up looking possessed. But when Ed screams Bathsheba and Carolyn's face turns towards him and it's all possessed as Bathsheba, that looks really good. That's very fucking effective. That's very creepy. Like, the makeup there is very well done. So uh, that's what I mean. It's like they made that look good. They could have made the rest look good. Like, they could have made the effects on just Carolyn, not Bathsheba's face, just her own face. They could have made it a lot better. We see right there that they do a great job. So, I don't know. And then the whole thing with the beach memory, like when we, they saw the picture earlier, Lorraine, and she's talking to Carolyn, and Carolyn's saying that was like a great family memory and stuff like that. First of all, in that, in that picture, it's just the family there. You don't see water, you don't see sand, you, you just see the sky in the background. So, like, it's not even a picture of them at the beach. So, like, the whole thing of, like, Lorraine just reminding her of that memory and that's what gets rid of the demon <sighs> I don't know and it seems so fucking dumb but yeah like what a stupid way to get <laughs> the fucking demon out of this woman and then it's even dumber in the second movie when at the end how Lorraine banishes Valak as you do, I know your name and it's Valak and then just by knowing her, the demon's name and saying it gets rid of the demon that's even more egregiously dumb but the whole thing with the beach and that picture and who took the picture like aren't they all in the picture i mean yeah of course they could have asked somebody to take it but that's just a little nitpick but now she's fine and the family's all happy and they'll never remember any of this because it never happened and again andrea perone if you ever see this you are completely absolutely welcome to come on the channel and talk with me about the true story here that you lived through because like i said i have a whole bunch of questions that you will not be able to answer because you know you're full of shit and this stuff never happened sorry like i don't mean to be a dick it's just my opinion i'm voicing and I'm entitled to it. This is my channel. I'll say whatever the hell I want. Even if I didn't have a channel, I'd say the same shit. Like, you were full of shit. You were just trying to make money off your books. And by going on literally any type of platform to just keep saying the same stuff. So, like I said, you open the invitation. Come on. I would love to speak with you about this whole experience you went through. And then Ed puts the, the music box in the d demon room with all the other things that are supposedly uh, conduit for demons. And then he says that they, the Vatican approved the exorcism and says nice timing. So, like, couldn't they get in trouble for, like, performing the exorcism without their approval? Like, isn't that a thing? Like, aren't they going to get, like, a lot of shit for that? No, like, so what does it matter if they get approval from the Vatican at all? Like I said, he did the exorcism anyway. So why does that matter? Like, it, I don't know. It, 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 so many questions. There's just so many questions here. And just we end with some bullshit text said, said by Ed Warren that anybody could just write something just as cool and sounding just as art articulate and demonic and that shit is out there that's evil and all that bullshit anyone could have wrote that and then we just end with the music box twirling on its own and then we see nothing which thankfully 
Like, there's no stupid jump scare at the end, like there are in most of these movies. So, I mean, damn, 42 minutes plus a half hour. This is over an hour <laughs> of talking about The Conjuring. I mean, I know I was talking a lot about the Warrens, too, and about the old true life case and all that stuff. So I'll just put that in the description, too. Like, there's a lot of talk about the Warrens and actual demonic entities and everything like that. Which is cool, because it fits this whole theme for the month of Demonic December, and just talking about demons and paranormal stuff and the truth behind it or anything, which there isn't no evidence at all, ever. So, I don't know. So, that's The Conjuring. It's a good movie. Like, I know I've been shitting on it a little bit, but... Or a lot of it. <laughs> but it is a good movie. It's not something I put on often. If anything, I watch the second one a little more often than this one because I like it a lot more. I mean, like I said, the, the ending at the end, which is knowing Valak's name, is, is so retarded. Is a way, that's how they get rid of it. It's that easy to get rid of a demon. You just like, and in a lot of these movies, it's like if you just yell at a demon and shit and say, like, Gil, get out, go away. They just, they listen, and they, that's all you gotta do. Just yell at a demon, and that's its kryptonite, and it'll leave. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's so, like, I don't even know the words for it. That's six, that's 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> like, I don't know the words for it. Just the whole idea and of saying that this is a true story, or based on true events, which we hear in so many fucking movies that... And they're never fully based on the true thing. Like, it's just inspired by true... Like, Cocaine Bear that's coming out soon. Echo, if you see this. <laughs> that whole shit with Cocaine Bear. Yeah, of course, it's a movie. So, but it says based on true story. Yeah, we, we looked up the true story. Echo did. Some guy had too much cocaine in his ass, smuggling it into the country, and jumping out of a helicopter or something, or a plane or some shit, with a parachute... And for some reason, he had so much cocaine shoved up his ass that gravity just, it just dropped him to the ground. The parachute didn't work. And he died. And then a bear came and what, ate it out of his ass? And then, but he ate the cocaine, the bear, and he just healed over and died. So he didn't go on no cocaine binge crazy killing spree <laughs> that they're advertising for that movie. So just the, every movie that puts in that is based on a true story. It's, it's, it, I hate that. Like, unless it's, like, an actual, like, true crime thing or, like, an actual event that really did happen that's grounded in reality and it's an actual thing that happened. Like, um, when I just did The Girl Next Door recently, that was an actual case. And I, just, I actually looked into a little more on the case after I saw the movie. It was even more horrific what happened to that, that poor girl than they show in the film. So, I mean, movies like that fine with the whole based on true events putting it here in the conjuring because of a story that was told by two people the warrens that investigated this case and have zero evidence to prove any of this happened calling it a true story is just fucking bullshit it's an absolute bullshit marketing ploy like, 100%. And I, I know I keep saying it. Andrea, you ever see this? Come on, I would love to tear you apart. Like, I really would. Like, because I have questions you will never be able to answer. So, that's The Conjuring. <laughs> I'll get to The Conjuring 2. I'm going back to sleep right now. Because I well, slept early, and now I'm, I'm still tired. If you can't tell. Like, I can't even articulate my thoughts right. But, I'm going to bed. And after that, I'll watch The Conjuring 2, which I enjoy a lot more, like I said, and I will have a video up on that. So wherever you guys are from, hope you're having a good morning, afternoon, or night, and I will see you guys soon. Take care.